The chosen ground was at Halodon, a hill two miles northwest of Berwick and about 500 meters high. The hill lay across the only road the Scottish army could use to reach the town, now under siege by the English. On the early morning, Sir Douglas arrived with his Scottish host, numbering 14,000 soldiers. They first took up defensive positions on the Witch's Knoll, which was the hill opposite of Halodon Hill. Defensively, this was an excellent position, however, Sir Douglas was very much on the offensive. Only he could break the siege of Berwick by either inserting 200 men-at-arms into the fortress or by defeating Edward altogether. Upon hearing of the Scottish arrival, the young King Edward made his final prayers to the Lord and marched northwards with a host of 10,000 well-equipped soldiers. The remainder of his force was left behind to continue the siege of Berwick. Between the two hills lay a muddy bog, which was sure to impede any advances made on the day. The first trial of blood of the young English king was about to start. Around midday, the battle began by the Scots forming up into three large divisions of Skiltron infantry. The cavalry dismounted because they would not be useful in the box. At the sound of the drum and horn, the pikes of the Skiltrons lowered, forming a massive and unstoppable forest of wooden shafts and steel tips. On Halidon Hill, the English solemnly prepared for the oncoming assault. His cavalry also dismounted and joined the infantry line. Edward's army was outnumbered 14,000 to 10,000. However, his army was well equipped and he had an ace up his sleeve. A great number of his army consisted of the English longbowmen. These famed archers were capable of high power, long range and a terrifying rate of fire. Hard pressed and out of time to launch his assault, Sir Douglas began the day by sending forth his mighty Skiltrons down the Witch's Snow. When the Scottish force reached the box, however, the assault began to slow as boots, shoes and legs got stuck and Skiltrons lost their cohesion. The English army drew forward and unleashed their bows on the encumbered Scots. Helpless, the Scottish Skiltrons pressed up the Halodon Hill. Men screamed and shouted as arrows pierced their arms eyes, chest, legs. The massacre was almost perfect. The battered Scots then had to face the fresh, heavily armored men-at-arms of the English. It was the right flank under the Earl of Murray who first managed to break through the hail of arrows and engage the English infantry. As the two sides exchanged spear and sword, axe and mace, Sir Archibald kept his dismounted cavalry in reserve, hoping to plug the gaps wherever needed. Murray's division however quickly faded under the elite troops of the English army. The middle and the left Skiltron then also engaged their English counterparts, but the battered Scots fared little better there. Sir Archibald's reserve infantry approached the battle lines, but at that point it was just too late to save his army. The middle and left division of Skiltrons was smashed and set out for a complete rout. The English infantry, smelling blood, then began their approach of Archibald's reserves. In this moment, Sir Douglas knew he had lost the battle. Fear stricken, the remainder of his army turned their backs to the English and ran for Halidon Hill, where their horses would be waiting. The English men-at-arms mounted and gave chase to the fleeing Scots. Thousands of men, disorganized, panicked, their weapons already thrown away, then scrambled up the witch's snow, where their aides would be waiting. However, when they reached the summit, they found it barren. Their aides had sensed the tide of battle and had ran for their own lives. The fate of Sir Douglas and his men was thus sealed. <laughs>